It's about that time of day again. Welcome back. Welcome back. 7.35 Eastern Time here. My name is Joseph James. I'm from School of Trade. I got Marty Errico here from Traders Audio alongside. And we're going to be doing our crude oil morning prep this morning. We're going from screen to the floor. I'm in Los Angeles in my home office. I'm going to be talking about a top-down technical analysis approach looking at crude oil futures this morning. And then I'm going to head all the way across the continent over to New York City, where we got Marty Errico, who's got his feet on the ground on the NYMEX exchange, and of course, crude oil futures, one of the most active pits in the world, the crude oil futures pit on the NYMEX. So I'm going to begin, once again, with a technical approach, looking at some charts, and then we're going to zoom on over to New York, touch base down on NYMEX, and we're going to hear from Marty Errico. Marty's going to be giving us some what I think to be some very unique and very uh, uh, useful pit analysis this morning. Now, I'm going to use a top-down approach this morning. My goal with this top-down approach is to go all the way from weekly charts, daily charts, all the way down to a five-minute chart so I can anticipate high percentage trading opportunities between 8 and 10 a.m. this morning. That's my job. I'm looking for high percentage trades between 8 and 10 o'clock this morning. All righty. Let's get started here this morning. I'm going to jump right over now first over here to our weeklies and our dailies. This is a very important part of the process each morning. Now, I want to remind you guys out there, if you're brand new intraday traders, that means if you're trading on a daily basis flat overnight, right, we're, we're looking to make our money during the daytime only, we remind ourselves that these dailies and weekly charts, they're not going to be used for actually trading today. They're going to be used to provide the background information. So the dailies and the weeklies, these do a great job at giving us information as far as what's happened leading up to today. Because we all know that price action today is a byproduct of what's happened, well, in theory, every tick of the market in the history of this contract. So it's important that we look at this leading up to what we're seeing this morning here on a Monday morning. By the way, I do want to wish all the moms out there a happy Mother's Day. One of the things will be one of the things you'll most likely hear out of a lot of people's mouths this morning is the fact that the day after a holiday is oftentimes a little bit slower than normal. So keep that in mind. Happy Mother's Day out there to all the moms. Make sure you guys uh, uh, spread the word out there. Right? Wish your mom a happy Mother's Day. And of course, we must we must also begin by saying that today being a Monday after a holiday doesn't matter what holiday it is, right? Same thing after Cinco de Mayo a couple weeks ago, right? Uh, we know now that coming out of a holiday, we're expecting a little bit of a lull in the market, right? As traders get back to their desks, nobody wants their weekend to finish up, and I'm sure most traders have mothers just like you and I. So, of course, we assume it's going to be a little bit of a slower start. Now, we do have 8.30 news this morning, which should get the party going a little bit earlier than normal, you'd expect on a Mother's Day Monday. Uh, but we'll be waiting for a little bit of clues at 8.30 for that news to see if we're, if we're going to be okay as far as market personality goes. Let's take a look at the weekly chart. Now, the weekly chart looks a lot like a daily chart. We can see we have a big price wedge, and this big price wedge you can see here, this big price wedge we're trading in right now, right? we're right up towards the highs of the wedge. So we know we have this resistance that's most likely going to be settling in here right at, at the top of that wedge. This weekly chart doesn't do us a lot of justice at this time. What I really, really like is the daily. The daily chart really tells a good story. And we talked about this yesterday on the newsletter. Uh, last night, sent out the newsletter here every, every, every evening, preparing for the following day's crude oil trading. And what I want us to notice here on this daily chart are two important things. One, we talked about this last week. We've got this sideways range that we developed last week, right? We talked about this all week last week. You would have had to have been living under a rock last week if you didn't hear somebody say, we're trading in a sideways range. So the reality is, is we see that what is, what is considered on a daily chart a, very rel a relatively short-term sideways range. Then we get the big drop on Friday. Remember that? Remember how Marty and I both were saying, boy, this is looking like a really big drop coming today. Remember that from Friday morning's broadcast? Well, we got that big drop. In fact, we used that trigger zone as the target just as we had suggested. Uh, we actually used the 9350, if you go back and look at our, our recording from last Friday morning, 9350 was our target for the shorts, and so we were able to fill that target on Friday afternoon, uh, Friday morning actually, before it bounced right back up. What am I, wh where am I going with this? Why is this important? Because the big wick, 
the big wick on Friday's daily candle. Look at the close of that candlestick, right? All the way back up into that range. And now here we are with this little spinning top of a daily candle now. We are locked in. We are locked in inside of this range here. It's very easy to see. This daily candlestick tells us the whole picture. It really paints the whole story for us right now. So whatever, whatever push price is lower on Friday, right, maybe it was everybody listening to our broadcast, Marty, when prices push lower, they zip right back up, and now you're going to see here this sideways range is going to continue here. And basically what we have to do is when we look at these daily charts, we think to ourselves, what are the people behind the candlesticks trying to tell us? What are the people behind the candlesticks trying to tell us? They're trying to tell us that there was no value in lower prices. There's no value in higher prices. Okay, if you look at market profile theory, this applies directly to market profile theory and the fact that the prices were rejected to the downside. So now we know that the sellers couldn't find any friends to the downside. The buyers couldn't find any friends to the upside. Well, what's a trader to do? Well, since we know we have a sideways range, let's plan for it. Let's make sure we're ready to capitalize on it. We're not going to force this market to be a trending market. Now, we, of course, want to have trade setups that, that will adapt to a sideways trading range. So we have a bunch of trade setups that we use in our trade room that are specific to choppy range-bound markets. And, boy, this four-hour chart really, really illustrates just exactly how sideways this range really is. And this four-hour chart really, in my humble opinion, sets the stage today as far as what is likely to occur. It's amazing because when you see these charts, I'm going to drill all the way down to a five-minute chart right now, and you're going to see exactly why I'm anticipating this to be very uh, – well, I think we're going to be ripe for a big breakout right now, but I think we've got room to go here until we get a reversal out of it. Let's take a look at this four-hour chart. A 240-minute is going to blend the daily charts with the hourly charts. This is that happy medium. I can see the big picture. I can see that big drop on Friday. I can see that big pop right back up on Friday. And, of course, now I can see how we've kind of fallen asleep here into the middle of this price wedge. Now, a price wedge is a huge clue, in my opinion. A price wedge tells me market personality. Higher lows, lower highs, right? Higher lows, lower highs. This market is screaming, I have no idea where I want to go next. In other words, last week's lack of news. Remember how last week was a barren week of news? We didn't get a lot of news last week. So there wasn't much news, there wasn't much stimulus to get those traders excited, right? Fear and greed, everyone's scared of something, everyone's greedy, everyone's looking, everyone's got emotions. So those lack of those news events last week most likely created this lack of direction. Without any major events telling the analysts what to tell their traders to do, well, we're left to sit here and wait for some catalyst to enter the market so we can get something going. Now, the fact that we're in the middle of this wedge is a, is a relatively big concern. Being inside the middle of any trading range should always be a concern. And since we've had this two-sided trading for the past few weeks, that concern is elevated a little bit. What I'm expecting to happen here is, is price to move towards the highs, for price to move towards the lows. But the reality is, is that when it comes to a price wedge, there's no telling how high it will go up and then come back down, go down, and then come back up. We know it will test the highs or lows of this wedge, but we have to be aware that there's potential for a price reversal inside of the highs and lows. So what I'm going to recommend is for the best trades today, since we have this bearish channel we can see, we know that when we have a bearish channel, the high percentage trades will come selling at the highs. So the high percentage trade today is going to be to sell around 96.23 to 96.47, somewhere around this 96.50-ish area. Remember, like I always say, a smart trader knows what they do not. We're not trying to predict. For all I know, crude oil could take off to the upside and keep on going. That's right. I have no idea how far crude will go, just like nobody else does. What I will be doing, though, is, is I will be waiting to see what happens up at the highs and once it starts to head lower, that's when we know those sellers have been able to fend off the buyers. This brick wall of resistance is most likely to hold. Let's keep going because this is a four-hour chart. I want to show you exactly the bigger clues that we get as we move a little bit faster. Four-hour chart tells us selling at 96.23 to 96.50 area is going to be the highest percentage trade so far this morning. 
let's drill down though and let's see what else we get. And again, remember, on this chart, we've got plenty of room to move higher, plenty of room to move lower. But we know that right now, it's a real, it's, it's a crapshoot. We really don't know exactly what direction it's likely to go. Let's take a look at some faster time frames. Let's go to a 60-minute chart. Aha! Now, a 60-minute chart shows us a lot more information, folks. Now, I want you guys to see this double channel we have here. There's a double price channel that we found inside of this 60-minute chart. Do you see it? You can see how there is a double channel going from top to top, right, bringing it down now to the lows. In fact, this channel low can most likely now be adjusted down like this. Perfect. So now we have a monster, almost sideways price channel marked up in the pink. Then we look in more short-term terms, and we've had this channel on our, on our radar since last Thursday evening. We know we have this now short-term channel. And boy, if you're, if you're asking yourself right now, can we even use that channel? I mean, look at how sloppy it is. We're going to break out down here. We're going to break up here. The key is, is the type of price action we saw Price collapsed out of that channel. Just as fast as it collapsed, it came right back up in. We get this big wick at the top of the channel. The lack of, the lack of any candlestick body inside that candle really tells the story. That, that resistance is right here. Now we see we've gone all the way back up to test that high. Guys, this is a huge clue for things to come. Bear channel. What does a bear channel tell me to do? Sell. Sell where? Sell at resistance. A bearish channel tells me that selling at any resistance level, whether it be inside the channel or whether it be above the channel, is going to be your high percentage trades. Now, this 60-minute chart may just be the most important clue we get for all the intraday traders today. If I'm looking to scalp this market this morning, which I definitely will be doing in our trade room today, I know that right now we have a selling opportunity. Remember, remember earlier we were talking about what was that level, 96.50? There's 9650 area. There are the sell zones now at the top of the major channel. So what does this tell me? This tells me that if I start seeing price collapse now, I'm getting in short. If it blows right through it, if I don't get the sell up, the the the, 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 uh, the excuse me the short setup, if I can speak this morning, luckily I'm not an English teacher for you guys. If I can speak this morning, I'll say I'm going to go. If price keeps going higher, we're then going to look for the reversal there too. So the high percentage trades here are going to be using the level we're at either right now, 95.60 area, or 96 even, 96.23, 96.50. I personally would expect to get the best selling opportunities up higher here today around 96.40 area, 96.50, like I said earlier. I'm going to show you why. The next chart tells me the most important thing, and that is the condition of London. Now, you always know, I start with those dailies and weeklies, I end up going all the way down here now, right, to a five-minute chart. This five-minute chart is extremely important because the first thing I can see is, is that the London trading range is very, very narrow. London's highs to London's lows. Now, we know, because we've been watching this for over a decade, when London's trading range is narrow, we expect to see a price extension. When London's trading range is very wide, we expect to see a price reversal. So what I have marked up on my charts right now is we've got our typical reversal zones. Remember, when the London session is wider, we expect to see price trade inside that London session. We have a specific formula that we use each morning that will predict if we're likely to see a reversal or if we're likely to see an extension. Today, we're expecting an extension. Now, I'm always going to be suspicious of this reversal zone. So I'm always going to be looking for that price reversal no matter what I think is going to happen. But in this, in this case, though, as I began this presentation this morning, we got a five-minute candle close above price reversal level number one. That basically tells me that we're not worried about this collapsing right now, at least not yet. We will expect price to move to 95.86, and that's where my buying target is this morning. I will then look for a price reversal at 95.86. Once again, as you heard me say earlier, I'm expecting the best trades to fall short around 96.50. And you can see that's going to put us right inside of price reversal number three. So we need to be a little bit patient this morning. 
if you're long right now on crude oil, I would definitely stay long until 95.86. If you're trying to buy right now, though, you're playing with fire. The risk reward on this is going to be a little bit too off balance. If you try to buy right now, your stop's going to have to be below the reversal zone, and your target will be at the buying target. As you can see, that's not going to be a very good risk reward. My, my risk is going to be very small compared to my reward. So I wouldn't go jumping into the buy just yet. Again, like I said earlier, this two-sided trading, this price wedge, I'm expecting to show us a wonderful price reversal here eventually this morning. So wait, I'm waiting right now for price to get up to 95.86. I'm looking to sell short at 95.86. If it blows right through it, that's perfectly fine. I'll be looking for that selling opportunity up at 96.25. And like I said earlier, this thing may keep on going. If I don't get the price reversal there, that 96.50 is looking for it here. Very challenging, very challenging to be a buyer on the way up to these levels today because of this Mother's Day Monday, because of this two-sided trading, and because of this uh, sideways trading range that we saw coming all the way back from dailies, weeklies, all the way down to the hourly charts we saw here on Crude Oil Futures. As always, I thank you guys for coming out and joining me this morning. I'm here in Los Angeles. I'm, I run a live trade room every morning, opening up at 8 a.m. Eastern time. And at this time, I'm going to roll it on over to Marty. I've got Marty Errico with his feet on the ground now on the NYMEX exchange. I provided a top-down technical approach to this crude oil futures market. Now let's listen to Marty and let's see what he's got to say coming live from the NYMEX pit. Marty, how are you this morning? Hope you had a great Mother's Day. Take it from here, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, JJ. Well, thank you very much. Good morning to you, ladies and gentlemen. So we're watching crude really just, I think it's going to work its way up towards the highs of the range. Again, we have ultimate highs from last week or two weeks ago, I should say, 97.20. Again, 97.20, that's the high from last two weeks ago. We have 96.50, uh, basically 96.70, the high from last week. So we're looking to work our way back up towards those highs. Again, we have 97, 20, 97, 60, 90, well, 97, 50, really, as JJ was mentioning. So we have these levels that we want to keep an eye on. That's above. But let's more importantly just talk about what's, what, what presents itself at the moment right now. So as we quickly look at crude, I'm looking at its neighboring markets, of course, as we all know what trades all in the same pit, crude, are bob, and heating oil. So our neighboring markets are all pointing to just a slight pullback this morning which we're all experienced, but now we're going to see positive pit session opens. That's the key, guys. So European markets, they diddled around during the European session. They pulled back just a bit. Now they're starting to show a little firm bit in all three markets, even actually all four markets, I should say. Brent, don't get me wrong. Brent, when I just came to the computer earlier, about an hour ago, we were down about $1.70 in Brent, and now all of a sudden we're down only $0.80, cents, so we're starting to gain back a little momentum to the upside in all of our markets. So Right now here I have your crude trading at 95.65 last print. We're only down 36 cents on the day, so we're starting to catch a little bit of a bid. Open interest currently stands 188,919. That's lower from Friday by about 12,000 contracts. Implied volatility losing a little steam about 25%. Our Bob Gasoline trades 283.40 last print. We're down about two pennies on the day. We were down a little bit more, but I'm looking at implied volatility right now just at about 21%. Open interest currently stands 80,180. Heating oil trades 290 basically, 286, 289, 86 I should say. So we're just a couple ticks off of that 290 even level as we have been watching heating oil starting to gain back its losses, as I mentioned here earlier today in all three markets. Open interest currently stands at 84,064. Open volatility is just about 20% or so. We're looking at Brent as well, 103.07. Brent WTI spread trading right now at 742. That's very tight this morning, 742. It's very tight again. Uh, that's support of a bullish price is here. We also see the calendar spreads rather tight this morning as well. June, July, 22 cents. July to Augie trades just about 19 cents. And the June to SEP trading at about 07 cents. Only thing that's bearish this morning is that June to August, uh, no, June to July, and June to Sep. Only things that are bearish. Rest of them are all bullish. Even the Brent WTI spread. 
So we looked at basically our multiple market divergence, our neighboring markets, all kind of pointing higher. We're going to get to levels in a minute, too, guys. Uh, we're also looking at our dollar index at the moment. Here we're watching risk on sentiment with the dollar just kind of drifting a little bit lower as this crude starting to gain a little bit of strength at the moment. Again, dollar trades lower along with bonds. The crude starting to gain a little strength. So I'll have your dollar last print at the 83.19 half as it fades off its ultimate highs that it made on Friday. Also looking at the bonds, as I mentioned as well, fading off the highs that it made from Friday. Euro currency trades higher, of course. Uh, British trades higher, and also our Canadian trading higher as well. We'll get to price levels later. So we look at the OVX settles today around 2283 on the OVX. That is now we're moving into the volatility delta aspect of things. So we definitely have a risk on sentiment moving on to vol volatility delta. As you mentioned, vol is pretty firm today in the implied and on the delta, we're pretty firm as well. We have about 50% in delta, so we should. They're buying the idea of movement. They're buying the idea of the decent volatility as well. So we should see a decent day, decent range, a little bit of upside activity. Test those highs, and then we can sell those highs. As that is our game plan of attack, pretty much. I believe that's what I got out of what JJ was saying, and that's what I really, I actually agree with him. Usually, we have a little bit of a different perspective, but today, I am looking to go higher. I do. I would like to see this make those highs and then sell the highs. Um, Moving on, we are also going to take a look at some levels here, guys. Again, we went over open interest. We have some. We have a lot of interest in the hundred dollar level. I was talking to Jeffrey yesterday, and me and Jeffrey were talking a little bit before our Sunday night meeting, and you know, we had a meeting before the meeting, and and we were talking about the hundred dollar level. And then Jeffrey went to, you know, he he basically told me about the one hundred five level with a lot of open interest in it, guys. So there's a lot of interesting activity coming into the market that's supporting higher prices. Now, a question that I got last night was, Marty, did we see 100? And I said, listen, right now the market, all the evidence that we like to look at already points to 100 bucks, just the market hasn't been there yet. Now, why isn't it there? Well, supply demand issues, there, there, are, there are a couple of reasons why we're not there at the moment. But we just have a little bit of resistance above, like I mentioned that, 97.20. Well, really, 96 half, 97 20, 97 60. That's it. Once we get above that, we have 98, and then we're up to 105. I mean, we, you know, I mean, 102, 105. So, like, we have like a just a few levels of resistance that we have to get above. So that's really it. Uh, let's continue on now. We talked about session high, session low. Let's talk about session high and low for Friday. Alrighty, guys. So I had a pit session high on Friday, 92 20. I mean, 96 23. It's 96 23. You're low, 93. 37. So what a large day yesterday on Friday. Today I have a daily pivot for you, ladies and gentlemen. I have daily pivot at 95.20, resistance above 97.03, 96.08, and 90.92. I got 192 as well, some my fourth level of resistance, so I do have a couple other ones. So again, that's 97.03, 98.06. I got 90.92 and 192. Support down below 9417, 9234, and 8950. Again, I have some levels, large levels here of support resistance above and below on the near term. Alrighty, looking at natural gas real quick. Again, we're looking for natural gas to trade below um, 390. If we get below 390, we'll be seeing 362. If we trade a, still above the 390, we'll be looking at around 420. So it's a pretty simple plan of attack. If we break below 390, We'll be trading lower, and we'll be seeing just a little bit of a offer or down to the 360s. If we trade below, I mean, if we trade above the four dollar, the 405, we'll make it up to 420. This is a very volatile market. We're expecting a lot of volatility in this market the next couple of weeks as we are into the shoulder season, and there's a lot of indecision and a huge sell-off. So as I mentioned, below 390, sell down to 360, above the 405s, buy up to 420. Simple. Alrighty, guys, that's about it here. I'm going to throw it back over to JJ. i got to get going. I'll see you guys for the beginning of the broadcast. That's what I'm talking about, Marty. Excellent job. Excellent job as always. Really appreciate you guys and gals coming in and listening here this morning. It sounds like uh, Marty and I are right on the same track here this morning. Expecting some sideways chop and slop. And as we look at this, uh, as we look at this most recent set of price action here in the five-minute, you can see uh, big candlestick wicks in that five-minute Big, big candlestick wicks tell us a big, big story. Looks like our price reversal level number two uh, is starting to get a little bit of traction here. 
Now remember, I will have, I do have a difficult time here getting too aggressive to the short side. I do expect price to make its way up to that 95.86 area, just so we're clear on that. But if we do end up getting a close here back below London's highs, 95.39, 95.39, then we know those buyers have completely failed and we will be entering to the short side. So 39, looking for a five-minute candle close below 39 to get back into the shorts. I will ideally, though, be looking for price to head up into that buyer's target and then give us the close below 95.86 so we can get down to the downside. And again, like I said earlier, don't forget about that sideways two-sided trading right now. Be very suspicious of those breakouts here on crude oil. Until this market starts acting differently, we're expecting those fake-out breakouts. We're expecting crude oil to act like crude oil normally does. Guys, I want to thank you so much for being here today. I'm Joseph James at School of Trade. That was Marty Erico from Traders Audio. As always, going from the screen to the floor. Thanks for being here for the morning prep. As always, we're also looking for your feedback. Don't forget to send us your feedback. I'm going to be having all the all of the uh, uh, charts updated on the website, so double-check the website before you guys finish up today. Grab the charts for today, and we'll catch you guys here tomorrow, 7.30 a.m., Monday through Friday. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.